morning. Happy Easter. Good morning. Good morning, Father. We start, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Again, good morning. My name is Father William Dine, and for all those who are celebrating with us at home, we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. We're here with Aquinas Middle School, celebrating this great celebration of the Holy Eucharist. As we gather here, my brothers and sisters, we always start with acknowledgement of our sins, so preparing ourselves to celebrate in these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you have crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord or God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. give me courage. 
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep. For you, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. As the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out, then he has driven all his own. He walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger, for they will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The question that those who were about to convert over to following Jesus Christ, when Peter addressed him in the Acts of the Apostles asked a question, what are we to do? The question proposed to Peter is one that we need to ask even down to this very day. Peter's answer was simple, repent and believe in the gospel, repent and be baptized. For us though, who are already baptized, we ask the question again, what is it that we are to do? We know that we are always in regular need of repentance for that sacrament of reconciliation and for growth within our spiritual lives and our spiritual journeys, but we still sit here asking the question, what is it that we are to do? What more? The Gospel tells us we are to follow the voice of the shepherd, to follow Christ. This is hard for us, for there are many voices within our world. There are many voices that call and try to lure us into things that are not holy. And we are yet called to follow only one voice, the voice of the Good Shepherd. This means first and foremost that we need to learn the shepherd's voice, but also that we need to learn the voices of those who are not the shepherd. 
We learn the shepherd's voice by what? By prayer, by worship, by doing loving actions. Through prayer, and particularly through quiet prayer, we listen for the promptings of the spirit that was given to us in baptism. This usually takes a quieting of our lives, an opening of our hearts, for the voices of the world tend to try to drown out rather than help us. So we need to quiet our lives to listen for Christ's call. We also need to have strength to follow, for the path is often rocky. It's not an easy path to follow. We need to follow with loving actions, but those loving actions are not actions that we're used to. We hear in our scriptures today, to follow Christ means to be patient in our suffering, as Christ was patient on the cross. When he was insulted, it said he returned no insult. How often do we want to return insult? How often do we want vengeance for what people do to us? When wronged, we are not to seek to get even but rather we are seek to act in love. In all things, we need to be willing to embrace hardships, sufferings, insult, particularly if they bear witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ, our shepherd, the one who is guardian of our souls and our Easter joy. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father, Brothers and sisters, God our Father wants us to be saved and calls us to the knowledge of the truth. Let us pray for him with all of our hearts. For the Holy Church of God, that the Lord guide it and protect it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the peoples of the world, that the Lord unite them in peace and harmony, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our brothers and sisters in need, especially those yet unborn, that the Lord assist them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves and our diocesan community, that we offer an acceptable sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions submitted by our viewers at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church, and grant us today what we ask of you in faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and all of the whole church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. In this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of our sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death has willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of Christ and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, the order of bishops, all of the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now we pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. 
Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep that you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace. Thanks be to God. Hi, everybody. Bishop Callahan here. And what a glorious Easter morning it is. He has risen, and it's his resurrection from the dead that is the source of our joy and our hope. Each time we come together at Sunday Mass, the joy of the new life in Christ becomes ours. While you are watching, know that the petitions you send to us are remembered at each Mass. I'd like to thank you for your support both in prayer and your financial support. If you are able to help defray the costs of this Sunday Mass, please consider sending a donation in any amount to the address listed on the screen. Thank you. Thank you very much. May God bless you this Sunday morning.